But I want to give you this tonight. I want to start us off right here. Genesis 1, verse 26 and 27. It says, Then God said, Let us make human beings in our own image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female. He created them. Students, I cannot wait to preach this word to you this evening. Youth pastor, I can't wait to preach this word. Mom, dad, whoever is in here this evening, I cannot wait to bring this. I'm going to title this message, Taking Ground. If you got notes, bring them out. If you got a phone, break out the notes on it. Whatever works for you. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to dive into the word this evening. Are you guys good with that? A few of you? Okay, we're going to need to work on that a little bit in a minute, okay? All right, let's pray. God, I thank you. God, I thank you that we get to be here this evening. God, I thank you that you made a way. God, I thank you so much for your divine intervention that's about to take place in this room, God, that it already has. God, for the ones in this room, I'm not even sure why they're here. They just came to hang out, God, but you have something special in store for every single one of these students, every person that's in this room right now, God. Lord, I pray right now these words that are spoken, God, would resonate in their hearts, God. It would change their heart. It would change their mind, God. It would put them on a path of trajectory and momentum of something you have in store for them, God. God, I thank you that we get to do this. God, I look forward to what you have in store, God, as we start this weekend, this evening. God, we give you the glory and we give you the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen, amen, amen. amen. Hey, guys, I am so excited for us to dive in this evening. Most of all, I'm excited that you're here. And it's going to be a fun three days, 72 hours. I know some of you are in from out of town and got all kinds of cool stuff planned for tomorrow and Friday, but every night's just gonna get bigger and better as we build to the finish. And I can't wait for what God's gonna do in your life. So if you don't know, my name is Aaron. I get to be the location pastor here at Real Life Church Mountain Home, as well as work with our students here at Real Life Church. And I just wanna dive in on this tonight. But the first thing I need from you this evening I need you to go with me and I need you to work with me, all right? Are you good with that? Yeah. All right, so that's when I need some amens, I need some responses, I need some A, hey, that's good, I need some mmm, bet, I need some of that, all right? So I need some of that, you know, like when I, when I say a good line, I need to know you're with me, okay? So we're going to practice it to start, all right? Even when I'm an idiot, Jesus loves me. Yeah. All right, perfect, we'll get there, all right? So I want to set you up a little bit this evening. That, that verse I just read you, it's one of my favorite verses. Because that's where scripture starts and it has such a standard of where we're going and what we're meant to be and what God created. Taking ground. So early in the 2000s, I know some of you are like, I wasn't even born yet. Early in the 2000s, there was this big Christian rave that was in OTW, not of this world. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Do you and your parents have any of those shirts, like not of this world? And you're like, what is that? Okay, a few of you, perfect. We'll walk through some of that in a minute. But there was this big thing, and everyone was always on this concept and this scripture, this foundation, that we are not of this world. God says we are not of this world. We are just passer throughs until we get to eternity. We get to a, glo- to a glory of spending eternity with him. And I want to walk through some of that this evening with you. And in this idea of not of this world, taking ground out of this world as our theme for the weekend. One of the things that uh, in this scripture, when you go into where it says they will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, the wild animals on the earth and the small animals that scurry along the ground. In this moment, God sets it up that now that all of other creation has been set, man will reign and rule over the earth. But how many, how many of you go with me? How, how many of you feel like so many times we are reigned and ruled by the things that are around us rather than being conquerors of what is around us? See, I, I love culture. Like, I love pop culture. I love things. I love to absorb. I love to learn. I love art. I love shoes. I love rap music. I love all these great things. But one of the things that I want to make sure that we are so intentional with is that we need to make sure that we are cultivating culture and not being cultivated by it. We want to be the ones that set the standard in culture and in change and in creativity because that's what God did for us. 
See, we, we are God's creation. It says that we are his handiwork. You are made in the image of God. In imago Dei, you are taken from the same substance of who God is placed within you. But how many times do we feel like that? You see, we have this big thing that we talk about in the world now, in our culture, because, again, we feel like we're so controlled and ruled by it. And this idea of identity, what is my identity? Who am I? What am I? What am I going to do? What should I go? All these things somehow finding who we are and what we're meant to be. But I want to set you free in some of these things tonight. Has anybody ever told you before that you are in control of your future, except for the ones that hear from RLC Youth that I told you just a few weeks ago, that's your control of your future. Has anybody ever told you that before? That you are in control of your future. Your decisions now are the ones that will propel you forward and what your future will look like. You see, there's this great book that is out there. It's a great piece of literature. Some of you are probably really familiar with it, actually. It's called, Oh, the Places You Will Go. Can you tell me who wrote the book? Dr. Seuss. I'm going to read you a few pages, okay? Congratulations. Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. You see, you have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself in any direction that you choose. You're on your own, and you know what you know, and you are the guy or girl who will decide where to go. You'll look up and down streets, look them over with care, and some you will say, I don't choose to go there. With your head full of brains and your shoes full of feet, you're too smart to go down and not so good street. And you may not find any you'll want to go down. In that case, of course, you'll head straight out of town. It's open there in the wide open air. It's just a little glimpse into that book. But it's amazing to me how Dr. Seuss is someone that's telling me, you are the one that gets to decide where you will go. So you get to make the choices, you get to make the decisions of where you are going to spend your future and what your identity looks like and what your, your purpose looks like. You get to make the choice to take the step. One of the great things when you begin to walk through scripture is God's promise. And what he's promised you, you know, we can go Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans of good and not for evil. Plans of a future, plans for a hope. But so many times we still dismiss those things. But God says, you know what? Everywhere you go is yours because you are mine. See, when we get a little bit deeper into this idea of identity, it's something that becomes so complex, but yet it's so simple when we really dig into it. You see, everyone wants to tell us that our identity is about what we identify as. But I'm going to set some of you free tonight. Your identity isn't what you identify as. It's about who identifies you. You see, God Almighty created you for a purpose with passions, with plans, individual to who you are. So what you identify as doesn't actually label you. It's who identifies you. And his name is Jesus. He died on a cross for your sins to carry your transgressions, your hurt, your guilt, your shame, the mistake you made last night, the one you made pulling in, the person you upset, the disrespect to your parents, the bad grades, just the, the blatant thing that you keep doing over and over and over again. He said, no, 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 no. That's not what defines you. I define you. I know the number of hairs on your head. I knit you together in your mother's womb before you were even thought about. I knew where you were going to go. I knew what you were going to do. But I need you to trust me and take a step to follow me. But that step, it's kind of, whew, sometimes, isn't it? How many of you ever felt like, you know, I, I, I hear that I'm a child of God. I know in Romans it says that you are more than conquerors. I know that there's scripture that says that I'm a royal priesthood. But there's times that things happen or I do things and I just don't feel like it. And it's hard. 
Because while everything else is telling me I need to go this direction, I know deep within me that I need to take a step this way, but there's still some things that are holding me over here. Students, let me tell you again, your identity is not what you identify as, but it's who identifies you. It says this. It says this in Genesis. We skip to another verse. How do we change this idea, this thought of identity? It says in Genesis 13, 17, go and walk through the land in every direction for I am giving it to you. This is the promise that God is giving to his people. You. See, when we look at culture, when we look at the things that we walk into, when we look at the things that this is around us as humans, I want you to look at this verse and what it says. When it, pull it back up for me real quick, Dom. Pull it real quick. It says, wherever, go and walk through the land and in every direction for I am giving it to you. You take a step to the left, that is yours. You take a step to the right, that is yours. Forward, backwards, wherever you go. I am with you and I am for you. And I need you to know that I am with you and I am for you because I have a great plan because I am the one that sets you up. I am the one that created you. I am the one that is going to push you to a new level that you can't even expect to get to. Is somebody with me this evening? A few of you, I hope we'll get there. Here's the deal. So many times we we see these scriptures and we hear these things. There's someone that stands on the stage and says this to us, that you have great things in store for you. If you would just trust God and follow God in every direction you take, it is yours. And But so many times when we're going through life, we get this high that we come out of a moment like this where we feel like we're steady and we're consistent in what God is saying and we're pursuing him in these moments. And then it starts to get hard. And we're climbing that mountain, and we're climbing that mountain, and we're climbing that mountain. And we begin to see that, you know what, I don't know if this is really for me. The thing when I read that book right there is that he chose to go a different direction. But sometimes we don't involve God in the equation about what direction to go. We just choose to go a direction. And so many times God's saying, I need you to climb this mountain so when you get to the top, I can let you see the beauty and splendor that is around you. I can let you see where you have gotten and where else I want to take you. But you know what's crazy about when people climb Mount Everest? You know, it's, it's it's a pretty big mountain. Like you, none of you are just gonna be able to walk out and climb Mount Everest right now. You have to train for it. You have to prepare for it. Just like your daily life. But so many people that set out to climb Mount Everest They quit within the last wave because of how hard it gets. They have trained and they have dedicated their life to making this mountaintop moment that so few people actually get to. And when they get to the checkpoint right before the end point, to the final, to the top, they say, I can't do it anymore. It's too hard. How many times do we do that? We set out for the ideal destination. We know that we are gonna chase after God, but it gets hard. You know, he he takes people out of my life that ultimately weren't great friends, but I know they needed to be removed so that I can go and do what God is calling me to do. You know, he takes things out of my life that I shouldn't be participating in, but everybody else is, and now I feel like I'm alone because I'm not doing what culture says to do. But students, here's the deal. If we're going to take ground, we are going to take back the culture that is around us, which means someone has to do something different. If you want to be a difference maker, you have to do different things. If you want to change the culture, you have to be the one that initiate the change. You have to be a catalyst, a catalyst that now changes and sparks the people around you so things begin to happen in them because they see it in you. Identity taking ground, new things, new opportunities. They're so hard, but the territory that you are stepping into is promised to you. You see, one thing that's incredible about who God is, is that he's territorial. You are his. Creation is his. 
and he wants to make sure that it is what it needs to be and you are involved in it. Because at the beginning of time, he created creation and beauty and splendor and perfection and we were a part of it. And he is territorial over you. Do you guys know that animals are pretty territorial, right? You guys ever heard of what a tapir is? The animal a tapir? Do me a favor real quick, pull out your phones if you're not taking notes on them. Go to Google, type in it, go to images, type in tapir, T-A-P-I-R. If you watch Wild Crats, you probably already know what it is, but that may just be some of us that have three-year-olds. So look it up, tapir. It's a pretty weird looking animal. It's like a pig, all right? Is it like, is, you guys got it yet? You guys found it? You see it? Some of you got it? Not yet. I know it's a metal building. If you're not on the Wi-Fi, it's going to be hard for you. It's got this weird nose on it. But something crazy happened a few years ago. You know, I, I was born just outside of Oklahoma City. So we used to go to the zoo all the time. And something happened there that was crazy. You see, mamas are pretty protective in particular about their kiddos, especially in the animal kingdom. So there was this lady who was in charge of taking care of the tapir. She was a zookeeper. And so she went into the pen one day to make, go and feed and do those kind of things, make sure everything was taken care of. And she wasn't aware of her surroundings. And when she went in, she didn't know, she was, went to take care of the baby, but she didn't know where the mama was. And so she walked in, and as she's tending to the area, making sure there's food, making sure it's clean, making sure there's water, making sure there's nothing that they need to get picked up, making sure the baby's okay. Her back was to the mom of this tapir. Well, her back was turned, the tapir then charged her and this weird looking animal that you wouldn't really think much about killed the zookeeper because she was in her territory and she was going to protect what is hers. Students, I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what your home life looks like. Youth pastor, I don't know what you're facing at your day job or your night job or what your lead pastor is like, but I know some of this. Here's the deal. God is territorial. And he's going to step in the way of things to make sure that you are protected. But you have to make sure you are aware of your surroundings as well. So you're putting you in your place to succeed. That way you're not having to check your back all the time about what's going on around you. Looking over your shoulder, you know, you know what's beautiful about what happens? And you're like, are you going to say, this is kind of weird. Prisoners. When a prisoner gets out of jail because they're pardoned, they don't have to look over their shoulder because they know they're free. But the one that gets away with something, the one that gets away with something, but they know there's still something there that they were involved with is still always looking over their shoulder. Some of you are tied to something and you have to break free from it. And you're saying, I just don't know how to. God is saying that the place that you have yourself, you're not aware of your surroundings. You're hurting yourself in what you're doing. You're being attacked from so many different angles. And I want to step in and I want to guard you. But you are putting yourself in some very, very bad situations. You're putting yourself around some very, very bad people. And I want to be there for you because I need you to listen to me. I need you to trust me. I need you to believe the scriptures that I'm giving you. Students, I want to tell you this for a moment. Partial freedom is still total bondage. It's still total bondage. You may say, you know what? I walk out of this moment this evening and I feel like God's got a hold of my heart and I'm going to do great things. But then you know what? When I get home tonight, I know what I'm going to open on my phone. And I'm still tied to that. I'm still struggling with that. It's still holding on to me and I'm not sure what's going to take place. So I'm not really experiencing full freedom in this moment of who God promises for me because I still have bondage tying me down. Partial bondage. Partial freedom is still total bondage. It says this in Joshua 1.11. You see, when we look at that scripture of Abram and God is promising them a place, He's promising them great things. He's promising them family. He's promising them wealth, all these great things. And then these bad dudes and the Egyptians come in and they take it all over. And when they take it all over, a guy named Pharaoh sets in 
And he becomes the new guy in charge. And then Moses shows up. And you guys know Moses, right? He's the guy that parted the Red Sea. He's the one that, that spoke the plagues. He did all these crazy things as he sought after God. And God had a purpose for him to free his people. But one thing that Pharaoh was intentional about was that when Moses came in and he said, hey, I need you to let my people go. He would say, okay, um, but you can't go too far away. So I'm still gonna watch you. So you have partial freedom, but you're still totally bonded to me. And he would do these things until the Israelites, until Moses said, no, 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 we are gonna go. And God breaks his people free and they begin to march into the land. But Moses was never able to go into the promised land, but he set up an intentional, and he was intentional with the next leader, the next generation that was come up with a guy named Joshua. It says this in Joshua 1, 11. It says, go through the camp and tell the people to get their provisions ready. In three days, you will cross the Jordan River and take possession of the land the Lord your God is giving you. In three days, you will go and you will go back and you will take the ground that God gave and promised to you. You know what else happened in three days? Jesus died on the cross and three days later he conquered death, defeated hell and rose from the grave giving you power and authority and victory in whatever you face through the power of the Holy Spirit who overtakes you in a moment of salvation and you get to go and pursue him and he has something great for you. If you would just say, that ground is mine and I'm gonna go take it. You see, students, some of you are walking through. I don't know what my identity is. I don't know what my future is. I don't know what culture's telling me. I don't know what God's telling me. Some of you just need to sit in a moment tonight and worship and let God begin to speak to you. But here's something that you guys need to do. First off, if you've never said yes to Jesus, I wanna walk with you through that tonight, and we'll do that in just a moment. But see, the beauty of creation is that God set everything in perfection and community and harmony. And you were part of that from the very beginning. And then, of course, the bad decisions that Adam and Eve made crept in and the evilness of the world sank in. And in that moment, God said, this isn't what I want. And so you had to bring altars and do all this crazy stuff throughout the Old Testament. You go and read that in your intentional devotion times. But then there became the moment he said, I'm sick and tired of this brokenness between my people and me. And so I'm gonna send my own son to die on the cross for their sins because they can't carry the weight. And so Jesus himself who walked this earth faultless, blameless, perfect because we can't do it was a sacrifice for your sin and my sin. See, when he was carried, when he walked through the city and carried a cross on his back, he was unrecognizable as a human being because he was beaten and mocked and scorned so significantly that you could actually see through his body where the flesh had been ripped from the bone. And he said, I'm doing this because of Jessica, because of Matthew, because of Dominic, because a David needs to take ground and know that I am in their corner in every direction that they step is theirs because they are a child of God. I created them and I have a purpose for them. Here's the deal, students. I want to show you something. I want to show you something. Some of you, some of you need to go and you need to take back the thing that he originally created for you to do. Some of you need to go and you need to take back the identity that he created you to be. I need you to go and you take ground and take back the purpose and the calling. This one's not gonna fit, but I'm gonna take ground and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna pursue what Jesus has for me. Take your ground. Because God has something great in store for your generation if you will begin to respond to it. If you say, I'm not going to be like the rest of the world, but I'm going to do something significant and I'm going to be a change and I'm going to do something different. I'm going to be who he created me to be. I'm going to take back the identity that he told me that I am. I'm going to go and I'm going to take back my future. I don't know what anybody's told you, what you'll never amount to, but God has something great in store for you. But here's my question. Are you going to take the ground? 
Are you gonna go and do it? Or are you gonna rush the stage and rush the front and worship and breath your hands for three nights and then you know when Sunday hits, oh, I'm pretty tired, so I don't know if I'm gonna go to church. What he originally created for you, what he identifies you, the name that he has given you, the future that he has for you. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes for just a moment, students. I'm gonna give you a couple challenges, a couple of encouragements here. The first is this, because I would be amiss if we didn't provide this opportunity. Some of you are saying, you know what? I am so broken, I am so hurting, I don't even know where to go, I don't know what to do but I know that I need Jesus in my life. And I know I need to respond in a way that says, God, I know you died on the cross for me and I wanna make you the boss and rescuer of my life. I need you to forgive me, I need you to love me, I need to recognize how great your plan is for me. If that is you this evening, you know what? I need to say yes to Jesus. If that is you, no one in the room looking around except for me and a couple of adults. If that is you this evening, I need you to just raise your hand and hold it up real quick. If that's you, I see a few of you. You just hold it there. They're going to bring you a card. All right, here you go. Hands up. Keep them there. If I see you, I see you, I see you. Keep them up. Keep them up. Keep them up. A moment of boldness and the confidence here. They're going to give you a card. We got a couple up here. No one looking around. If you need to see, say yes to Jesus tonight, they're going to give you a card. They're making their way. Keep your hand up. Here's what we're gonna do. Keep your hand up if you haven't got one yet. I wanna walk you through a quick prayer. The prayer doesn't do anything. It's what you are saying from your heart and the belief within you that I am not enough, but that Jesus is. I wanna walk you through this prayer. And then I need you to do me a favor and I need you to fill out that card and I need you to get it to one of the adult leaders that has a lanyard on, okay? If you hear me. So here's the deal. This is the first challenge, this is the first encouragement. Nobody else looking around the room. If you raise your hand and you got a card, I want you to repeat after me. Again, these words don't change you. It is what say you are saying inside of you that changes you. If you have a boldness in this room tonight, I, need, I want everybody to pray this with me to give them a confidence and know that everybody in this room is with them, all right? Out loud and boldly, dear God, thank you. Thank you that you created me. Thank you that you give me purpose. Thank you that you give me passions. But God, tonight, I profess from my heart and out of my mouth that I am a sinner that needs your grace, that needs your forgiveness because I am not enough. And through Jesus and his death on the cross, and resurrection from the grave. I profess my faith to follow you and only you for the rest of my days. When it gets hard, I will follow. When I fail, I'll cry out for forgiveness. And in all, I will worship. Jesus, thank you. And in it's your name I pray. Amen. Hey, every head bowed and every back closed in the moment. Just do this with a clap and celebrate for those lives that were just changed. <laughs> Fill out that card for me when you get a chance and make sure it gets to one of those adult leaders. Several hands going up, several cards getting filled out. But here's my next challenge, my next encouragement for you. Some of you are in a spot that's saying, now, you know what? I never knew that creation was meant for me to reign and to rule over it. And I'm gonna go take it back. Some of you are so confused about identity because you don't even know what identity is. So you're gonna go take back your identity and who he created you to be. Some of you say, I don't know what my future looks like. I don't know what it holds, but I know I need to go take it back because I have a future in front of me. 
I'm going to go take ground for my people. I'm going to go take ground for my family. I'm going to go take ground for my culture. I'm going to go take ground for my generation because God is going to do something great in single in every single one of you if you would believe and go. So some of you tonight are just going to need to come to the front and say, God, I am here. Some of you are going to need to go tap a a shoulder of a youth pastor and say, I need you to pray for me because this is the bondage that I'm feeling. And I know partial freedom is still total bondage. Some of you need to go and say, you know what? This is what I keep saying. I identify as, but I need to realize who identifies me. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray. These altars are going to be open. There's going to be people available and ready to pray with you. This is a moment for you to worship and cry out to God that created you. Go take ground. Because you have great things in your future if you believe in yourself because God believes in you. He created you for a purpose. He put passions within you. He has a plan for your life. Take the hard steps. Because when you take that step, He's already promised you that ground. So God, tonight I thank you. God, I thank you for these people in this room. God, I thank you for the opportunity to speak. God, I thank you for how, what you're already doing this evening. God, I pray right now for the ones who are going to flood this altar, God. God, for the ones who are going to lift their hands. God, for the ones who are going to break free from the bondage. God, for the ones who are going to say, this is who I am and who you created me. For the ones who are going to answer a call, God. God, I thank you tonight that we get to worship you. God of creation. God of beauty. God of splendor. God of majesty. Lord of Lord and King of kings. We get to come into your house tonight and praise you. God, we thank you. God, I thank you for this generation and what you have in store for them. God, and we give you the glory and we give you the honor and we give you the praise. In Jesus' name, everybody said.